an emotional, uh, intellectual, and, and you talk about pain, and that is a burden in some regard to have this mass awakening that we are having right now with the intellectual age, I guess you'd call it, the information age. Information. Um, what we do have is just information hitting us really fast, and it does become overwhelming, and you want to tell, help warn everyone and tell them the dangers of what they are facing in the world right now in our reality. We've got to stay in balance then. We've got all this information and too much just straight information is just like too much straight whiskey. It's got a little, you got to have a little bit of balance because it can toxify the body. And there is also this growing agreement that we have to find a way to move into the age of wisdom instead of just this technological information overload. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff that we can get off the computer, off the internet. Uh, but I mean, if we're just experiencing our reality through that particular box, we're forgetting about nature and we're forgetting about that which makes us human. I think we have been kind of distracted and kind of taken out of our element, which would be our natural element, the, the ability to take care of ourselves. We're dependent on a system now, a machine, a package, a product, something that's sold to us and told we need. And in, in actuality, we need family and community. And that is breaking down as people go into a group and watch a movie. You see hundreds of people just staring at a, at a screen and they're not communicating and I think that is part of the problem. They're not communicating. We live in a world of instantaneous communication and people are text messaging maybe people across the world but they may not be making eye contact with that person right in front of them. I think these conversations are important. They are empowering, not disempowering because they're identifying that there's a problem here that there is some sort of a lack of ease, dis-ease socially uh, when we look at our world today. And I know what things look like um, if we just let the elitists dictate how we live, uh, to socially engineer us into a society, a culture that simply buys things because the packaging is um, attractive enough. But I think people also fall into line in the same sense that they package themselves. They wear their own masks instead of truly being who they are because they're trying to sell themselves as well to their fellow man, their fellow brother and sister. It's been conditioned to look at the surface instead of the substance of I gotta be honest with you, David. The more the more I awaken, the more my taste in women even change. Okay, no, that, that's understandable. I mean, you probably grow tired of the ones that are kind of stuck in a rut. Maybe the simple things are no longer interesting anymore. Maybe they are where you were, and you yeah. want to evolve to a higher level. And not to say they're at a lower level. It's just that you're looking for something more, a different frequency. Well, that's why your environment is important. The people that you that you keep around you, your 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 circle of friends. And I think people should um, differentiate those that are acquaintances sometimes from their friends because some people, once they enter your circle, th there are influences out there that can lead us astray, not just the media, but if someone's not a right energetic match, they can bring you down. Guilty by association. Guilt by association, yeah. I mean, I know that because I'm in a different um, energetic frequency, and not that I'm saying I'm all enlightened or whatnot, but I'm on a different path in life, a different level of awareness, I've met a lot of people that say I've been attracted to, but because I'm on a different match and I have a different set of belief systems, there's a lack of compatibility sometimes if there isn't any type of um, open-mindedness there uh, to investigate further. Um, most people uh, react with fear when they meet someone that has a different belief system or understanding as to the way that uh, things are. While I'm not in charge of, of how they respond to new information, I know that I surely don't want to respond likewise when I'm presented with new information about this world. So I'm constantly even challenging my own belief systems to make sure that they are also evolving uh, with the times. And I think that's the responsible thing to do. I mean, you wouldn't want to get involved in a relationship if you're with somebody who's not even trying, you know, if, if they're not even trying to figure out where they are, where they came from, who they are, who they intend to be. Mm -hmm. Where are they going? And those are the simple questions. And if they're not doing that, I guess you're probably just not on the same page. And even though this show mostly is about the new world order, the police state, and um, different um, theories about the future, uh, discussions about survival uh, and strength in the different areas, from emotional, physical, psychological, we bring up relationships because I and many others believe that some of the root causes of our problems come from a major, major uh, imbalance between men and women. And when you look at our lives today, you don't see very many happy relationships. They're responding to the stress from the external world, which to me, to me, is not a strong relationship. If you're going to be affected by these things out there and you're going to let um, 
these software programs, if you will, that are out there in this wireless biological matrix um, affect you and your sense of self and even what you're attracted to, your thoughts are not your own. And I think in this recovery, in this evolution, in this expansion of consciousness, relationships have got to be looked at very closely because that's what this comes down to. It's hard to know what your own thought is anymore, especially when people are being programmed, you know, watching the programming on TV. And, and I can see it, and I can sit back and watch it with other people that see it. But there's many people that just watch the shows and accept and swallow and absorb and become a sponge and then yeah, are programmed. So if you bring up a subject that they've been programmed to disagree mm -hmm. with you, then they act like you're crazy. In reality, they need to do a little bit more research and figure out what the real issues are. I want to get into what uh, deprogramming means for you. Uh, I know for me it's, I mean, your first thoughts when you get out of bed, they're very, very important because m my first thoughts are, I got out of bed today, I'm like, this is going to be a powerful day. Things that bring me happiness are going to enter my time-space reality. I'm not going to be a slave to whatever the New World Order is going to dish out. And first thing out of the bed, I don't need to go to a particular website to find out uh, about more hell that's being unleashed about this planet that I choose to call Earth. It's my reality. It's my world. And as long as people understand that, they're going to be stronger spiritual warriors in the days, months, years ahead. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, you have to cut it out. And I think, you know, part of the, the reality is understand it, do as much research as you can, and when you figure it out, then you cut it out. If it's high fructose corn syrup or if it's the toxins that you, you know, you've learned about, then you, you cut those things out and you make a choice. You do have that choice and you do create your own reality. So if you choose to drink the aspartame or if you choose to eat the GMO foods, then you know, that's your choice and you will pay the consequence. For right. It. I mean, I know a long time ago our ancestors knew about the importance of water and somewhere along the way that, that awareness just eroded. Uh, but now we're coming full circle again. We're becoming more aware of this this uh, global earth energy that is in our body and is around us that gives us life, i.e. water, and the very awareness that we know that our city wants to put more ammonia and chlorine in our water supply is a positive thing that we're aware of it, so hopefully we can stop it because what they're doing, and we talk about like the programming and whatnot. And sodium hydroxide. You know, that's, yeah, that's the, the, the water quality, I know you're really into this, it, it lowers our vibrational state of consciousness when you destroy that consciousness, which is a store of memory, with these chemicals. I wonder if Adams, for example, or a mayor, is even aware of this. Or it's Randy, just things like this, yeah. You know, um, Randy Leonard, you know, they are on the take. They do make money from choices that they make. Well, are they making those choices or are they told what to do? Or do they even know that this is going on? So this is the importance of city council to let them know that, hey, what you're doing is wrong and we're going to let you know that these things are going on. We're going to give you documents. And so there are no excuses. So we can't walk away and go on, we didn't know. And I guess that's more than just the water conversation. It deals with the economy. Oh, well, we didn't know. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. You do know. I'm giving you information. Now you have the 